working telephone booth. What does sign say? Hello. Today I decided to take a break from all the crazy pandemic stuff and head to Whidbey Islands and some of the state parks here. There's about seven state parks on this island. And there's a couple of trials I hadn't yet explored. So figured come out and do some research and get some photos and bring you along with me. Right now we are on South Whidbey State Park and there's a little trail here. It's a about it's less than a mile I believe. That takes it out to a loop. It's up high on the bluff and um, goes through some forest lands and some wetlands I think. Now um, the park itself as you can probably see behind me here is on the um, Admiralty Inlet yet um, it's really not known for its beach. The beach is small and right now they've uh, blocked off access to the beach because uh, the bluff had collapsed and keeps washing out the trail. But even when you could get down to the beach, the beach was kind of small and you know there's some it's picturesque. You can get you can photograph sunset. In fact almost every single park here you can get a good photograph of sunset from. But um, what really is amazing about this park is this forest. The forest the story of this park really is the forest and how the community came together to save the forest. The part I'm hiking in right now is a, the older portion of the park, which is only about 60 years old. But on the other side of the roadway, which you can hear the cars going by, is about 250 acres of a forest land that the community pulled together and saved in the 1970s and finally in the 1980s. Uh, actually, I believe it's 1991, the parkland over there was signed over to the Washington State Parks Commission. So I wanted to bring you along on this little jaunt and I hope you enjoy the trip and we'll see if we can find some good photos and talk about them. Come along. and hitting some branches and I'm probably just going to handhold something and just grab a quick image uh, with my telephoto uh, it's a 70 to 300 lens just to grab it because I'm afraid the light's going to uh, die here any minute so hang on and we'll get moving again I also see around my tripod where I put the tripod up for the video camera there are some uh, Stingy nettle <laughs> starting to grow. Spring is on its way. Sometimes when I'm out hiking, and uh, especially when I'm hiking with a group, I don't always take my tripod with me. I have image stabilization in the in camera, not just the lens, it's in the camera, because it's a Sony, and so I'm able to, as long as I'm able to remain calm, breathe calmly, deeply, calm down the, the shakes, and not shake too much, I can usually grab a, a quick image of something that is pretty nice. Is it a portfolio image? Maybe not, maybe not this one either. But uh, it's just something to help grab those memories as I'm walking along the trails and seeing what's out here, especially when I'm doing research for the book, which is what I'm doing today. It's just to be out here, walking the trails, see what's out here. And this is, a lot of it is for memory purposes, to remind me as I'm writing what you can see and what you can photograph on these trails. So that was a really pretty uh, sight. The light is starting to uh, fade away on it. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Yes, I love skunk cabbage. Okay, maybe I don't like smelling it, 
but I love photographing it and this is a really pretty one. So I think I'm going to stop and play with it for a bit. Not needing the circular polarizer for this. I'm going to open it up as far as I can to blur out the background. And I'm going to get really close to the a little nod. Uh, I think this is a Steinman pistol. Whatever. <laughs> really cool looking thingy. Widen it out. I hmm, don't necessarily like. I'm getting a lot of the a lot of the platform in here, and I'm really not liking that. Um, but I really like how I framed it up with this it coming up and the, this in the background, but just not very happy with it. So, put that in my pocket. Can I do something with this little guy? Not really, because again, the boardwalk kind of cuts off most of the flower and it's not as pretty half cut in half. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this alone and just admire its beauty. It's starting to stink a bit too because it is a skunk cabbage. And then we're going to go ahead and head up the trail a bit. Even the leaf is, has a really nice visual to it, but just not, um, I'm not getting the image I would like to for this. So we're just going to keep going. Not only do we have skunk cabbage, but we have some salmonberry blossoms. Oh, the lovely little pink blossoms. And when, later in the season, they will turn into, and now it's all blurry. Come on, there we go. They'll turn into raspberry-like berries with little nodules, but they'll be kind of yellow. And some of them will be kind of an orange, but very yummy, very tasty on the trail as you're hiking through the woods. <music> photographing forest one of my top tips to be out here is to just don't look just forward look backwards see what the light is doing behind you look side to side see how the plants are see if you can find some details within the plants that you can focus in and zoom in on and make create a little vignette of of the story and you know look down at your feet. There's so much life happening at your feet. Here we have tons and tons of mosses and, and little uh, side trail plants. And then look up. Right now it's just absolutely wow. You've got some buds coming out on the alder tree that are around here. We've got this beautiful alder tree that's going this way. And just the network of branches coming through has this really beautiful articulate lacy pattern to them. I've got a car coming by, so please ignore the car because we're right next to the road here. But uh, it just kind of shows you, know, you can find some beauty right next to the road. So I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna pull out my tripod again. I'm just gonna try and grip, gather, gather some images. I, I'm loving this salmonberry here too that's just catching the light and I'm wondering how wide I want to go so I'm going to play around a little bit and I'll show you what I get afterwards and I um but basically I'm just going to be photographing upwards and all those beautiful lacy branches catch you in a minute
western red cedars and they are the grandmother tree of many of the Native Americans who live in the Pacific Northwest. They use the tree for pretty much everything including clothing, lodging, basketry, but uh, these are just beautiful. Another story about this uh, park is over on the other side in the section of the forest that was saved several years ago, there's a really, really old, old uh, ancient tree called the Big Cedar. And uh, but you'll find in this forest a lot of cedar trees, nice old ones, uh, several hundred years old. And uh, this one, both of these, I love the curve, but this one here has the curve and leading lines going into the bark and, um, and just enough highlight. I mean, there's not a lot of light on it, but it's getting some reflection from the marshy area over here to just kind of bounce in and create some definition in the bark and the, the roots. So I really love how the, the roots lead you up in with the, uh, nice curving lines and how everything just kind of curves together. So I've got my camera set up here. It's at, um, when it's set at F8, because I do want a little bit of, whoops. So F8, uh, one fifth of a second. I do have it on a two second timer delay. So, because I'm not using a shutter release right now. So that kind of helps steady the camera after I press the shutter. And I'm going to go ahead and, okay, I did press that shutter, didn't I? Let's try it again. <laughs> there we go. And it looks amazing and exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and pack this up and we're going to head down the trail a little bit more and see what other wonderful trees we can find. They're gorgeous. <laughs> wonderful skunk cabbage in this little wet area. There's some more over here. And this one tree, it looks like it's a, a hemlock tree that's fallen. It has some beautiful uh, ferns off of it. I think those are licorice ferns. And I just, I really like, it's messy and I'm not too sure I'm going to really like it once I get done with it. But right now I've got the tree at the top just kind of curving up into the corner. And I normally don't like putting things going out of a corner, but I think because I have a wonderful kind of a V shape with the skunk cabbage down here, that that's not really gonna matter too much. I'm hoping the eye is more drawn here. I've got a, my super wide angle lens on, and it's at about, um, it's open up to about 10, you know, um, 10 millimeters. And uh, so the widest I can go. And um, again, I've got um, the two second timer on. It's at an F8 and 1 20th of a second at ISO 200. And I'm gonna have some interesting problems with the splotchy light, which is gonna add to the messiness of this. But I just love this scene so much. That I just, I wanted, to, I wanna capture this and keep it from memories because I it's just it's so pretty so let's go ahead and get that done and there we have it it's uh
Yeah, I might have to play with it a little bit in Photoshop, but I like it. story about the trees at South Whidbey State Park is that the campground is now closed uh, and closed for the foreseeable future because all of this old growth out here well the trees are getting old and they're getting diseased and have become a potential falling hazard on the campers so they've decided to close the campground but there's still so much to do out here uh, you get if they ever get the trail down the beach open, there's some beach, but the, you know, there's a, several trails through the trees and the forest here, and it's just a nice time to get away. And one of the reasons I picked South Whidbey today is because it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day. Uh, we have been quarantined in this state, well, not necessarily quarantined, but we've been asked to do the social social distancing for a couple or over a week now and people are needing to get out and get about so i su suspect the bigger parks on Whidbey island are going to be absolutely full right now and i am going to go up and visit some of those but i wanted to just be able to bring you out here and show you one of the lesser known parks one that's not visited very often and show you that it's beautiful and it's even with the campground closed there's still a lot to explore here so I, I hope you did enjoy it <laughs> please say you enjoyed it and by say you know tell me you enjoyed it by give, leaving me a comment give me a thumbs up and uh, if you liked this adventure and some of the photo tips i gave you then please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified when i post more photos adventures and i, I post both photo adventures at where I give you some tips and hints and advice to use when you're out photographing and I also give you some adventure just plain fun adventure type photos or videos <laughs> and with that I will say goodbye